this very simple model on the right side is designed to communicate something that is absolutely fundamental and foundational in the human life process. Whatever patterns we hold in our lower chakras, whatever beliefs we hold, whatever values we operate from, whatever recorded simulacra we have in our systems, it is referenced quite often as if it is fact. And that defines literally whatever thoughts we can allow ourselves to think. It defines our emotional internal climate. It defines our behaviors. It defines our quality of consciousness, our functional capacity to change the world. If we have beliefs such as, or, or subconscious patterns, or simulacra, or recordings in our systems at subconscious levels that say things like, I'm only safe if I'm right, or I'm only safe if I'm in control. How many of us get to always be right all day long in any social or relational process? So nobody. So if, if we have a built-in dysfunction that says, I'm only safe if I'm right, and I'm only safe if I'm con in control, or I'm only safe if I'm better than other people, and we don't ever get to be in control, right, better than anybody else. And we're busy constantly checking to see or compete to be more right, more better, more in control, or higher status than other people. That's going to define and inform our, all of our thinking processes, our decision-making processes, our behaviors, how we relate to other people, what our options are perceived to be from moment to moment. And that is going to hamstring us or paralyze us or keep us running around in a, in a, in a round room looking for a corner or in a straight jacket of our own thoughts and interpretations and prior, the inertia of our prior habits, behaviors or, or recorded choices. And that's gonna in, inhibit us from be powerfully taking action in the world to solve climate change, to bring consciousness to other people and to define a new life process for humanity and to rejuvenate our natural world, which we depend upon for our survival. So if this very simple process and pattern is, is going on all day, every day, it, to one extent or another, creating stagnant, limiting domino effects in our lives, our relationships, and our world, skipping record dynamics that don't serve anybody, not in any comprehensively, really substantive, holistic, wholesome way. If we're doing that, and that's what we're doing all day, every day, is it gonna benefit us to do something more conscious? Is it going to benefit us to make a conscious choice to do something more conscious? And to let go of these old dysfunctional, non-optimal patterns, like letting go of a hot coal that's been burning our hand for lifetimes. And all we've got to do is let it go. And it'll cease burning us. It'll cease burning our world. Human beings often feel feelings that they can't clearly identify, express, dis or describe, or define. We could call these belief states or belief feeling states or, or recordings in our systems that we refer to and relate to over and over again that we're highly identified with. We might even think that this is who we are as a person or as a man or as a woman or as a wife or as a husband or as a boss, or as an employee, or as a soul. These recordings can be as simple and dysfunctional as I hate my life, or I, I, I hate my past, or I hate what I've done, or I 
I have to make sure I'm safe or I'll, I'll never find happiness or uh, in this moment I'm depressed or nobody loves me or I'll only be safe if I'm in control. There's actually a name for this, uh, believe it or not. I may be pronouncing it, uh, alexithemia. This inability to simply be aware of what we're feeling and understand how our feelings and or belief feeling states are affecting our decision making, our interpretive lenses, who we feel we are, who we feel other people are, moment by moment by moment, is not an optimal mode of function. It, it doesn't allow us to say, oh, yeah, I feel this and I'm ready to let it go right now. Through meditation, through self-awareness, we can become aware of these feelings. We can suss them out. We can surface them. We can process them out. We can release them. We can transcend them. We can heal them. We can be informed by them and we can let them go once we've learned anything that they have to, to, to teach us and not be encumbered by them or limited by them or caught in them or feel trapped in them or defined by them. <clears throat> So this dynamic of being able to clearly identify through whatever means, meditation, or through conversation, or various therapies, this, uh, or through facilitation, this process of understanding, oh, I feel this way. It's really not helping me to feel this way. So I'm just going to choose not to feel this way anymore. As soon as we get to that aha moment, all of those belief feeling states just can go away. And we can recognize they're not who we are, or who we've ever been, or, or they've never def truly defined us. They are not limitations. They are not a straitjacket. They are not a net we're caught in. They are not a glass ceiling that we don't have the capacity to transcend. The, the taxonomy or the method of organizing what might be termed dysfunctional, stubborn, pessimistic, skeptical states or dynamics of denial that result in paralysis and create this rock tumbler dynamic on our planet of everyone bashing against each other as unconscious tribalized ego identities com competing with each other, trying to be better than each other or destroy each other or, or prove ourselves better than each other. Letting go of that is challenging. And when you do, paradoxically, there's, it's not uncommon to find a part of ourselves that is so entrenched, so committed, so invested in these judgmental dynamics, fearful dynamics, tribal dynamics, competitive dynamics, etc., that it gives us back a flat no. Either I or they or he or she or we or it or no one or no human being will ever accept this or do this or understand this or get this or trust this or care about this or feel this or think this or know this or want this. All of these are projective dynamics that limit personal transformation and they create projections within us as individuals and as, as uh, collectives and teams in regard to what we assume the world will accept, what it won't accept, will it, what it will understand, what it won't understand. And, and if we project that nobody's gonna get it, no one's gonna understand it, that's not true. That's our projection onto them. That's our fear talking. That's our patterning talking. Our own resistance to change and transformation being experienced as an internal dialogue voice saying, they probably won't understand. They probably won't be open to it. They probably won't realize what I mean. They probably won't believe me. They probably won't want to change. They, they, they may never want to change, or I'm sure they'll never ever feel what I feel or, or believe what I'm saying or, or experience it in their hearts and minds, or they'll never want to have this or receive this or be this. All of this is a dynamic of denial and skepticism and pessimism and stubbornness at subconscious levels that generates what might be termed emberification of the human tribal process. Where is the faith in this dynamic? Where is the trust 
in, in the potential of humanity in this skeptical, stubborn, pessimistic dynamic? Where's the optimism? Where's the fun? Where's the joy? Where's the let's go do it together? Where's the we can do this together in these kinds of patterns and these kinds of thoughts or feelings? Where's the possibility thinking? Where is the future of humanity in this kind of subconscious tribalized paradigm? We don't, there is no requirement to ever operate from any of this ever again, not even for a single moment if you choose otherwise. You have that power right now. Transcending this is power because it means you will be conscious. In order to transcend this, you will be required to become in some way, to some degree, more conscious. And that's powerful. And it's a loving, kind, caring power. It's not an abuse, abusive power. It's not an ego power. It's not a tribal power. It's not a taproot power. It's not a feeding or destructive warring power. It's a power of love and possibility. And every single person on this call and every single person in the whole world has that power. And it's got to be practiced. It's got to be exercised in order for us to feel confident in utilizing it, in expressing it co-creatively, individually, and together. And we can do it. And we are doing it. We have been doing it. We are doing it. We're doing it today. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it next week. And we'll get better at it every step along the way. <laughs>